All right, folks, Tom Biles with Base Gear Magazine here, and we are thrilled that we're getting a chance to talk with Jeff Gensler about his exciting new Kinetics 800 base head. We've been given the chance to do an early look, first scoop on this thing. Um, I love it. You're going to hear more about my thoughts in a little bit, but uh, I wanted to get Jeff uh, on the, the chat here and kind of pick his brain about what went into designing this. So first off, once again, Jeff, thanks for the chance to take a look at the Kinetics 800. Well, thank you. Um, we're excited about it. And, uh, you know, it's great that it's finally uh, coming to fruition and, and getting out there, you know, so we're excited. I know, you know, you and I have talked about, I think what were, were the, original thoughts in this had quite some time ago. How long have you been working on this project? Well, it started just, you know, just before COVID and uh, mm -hmm. certainly COVID came along and that slowed, you know, variety of processes down and the same uh, with this design. But, you know, we're a small team and there's other things that came up that we needed to address uh, along the way with different products. And the Base Array Series 2 is one. I mean, that took a lot of time to transition, you know, about a year and a half ago. So uh, the uh, kinetics, you know, it's it's been a labor labor of love, let's say, for, you know, the past uh, three or four years. But uh, we weren't in any big hurry with it because we just wanted to make sure we did it right. And doing it right is also in its simplicity. And that's kind of the whole basis behind what this amp is. So. So for those who don't know, the Kinetics is uh, based on the 800 watt power section that the Magellan uses, yep. but it has three tubes in the, the preamp section yep. of it. And it's laid out rather differently. The tone stack is different. The, the, the controls are different. Yep. And one of the questions I have for you, Jeff, is, you know, in 2024, there's all types of modeling out there. There's emulation. You know, there are lots of ways to do things solid state that obviously the Magellan itself you know, sound fantastic. Yeah. Um, what was your reasoning behind going with tubes for the kinetics? Well, I think the beauty of what, and Scott Andres is our engineer and, and he's impeccable when it comes to design and, and getting, uh, you know, down into the, the weeds on, on circuitry and all that. And, and we work together very closely and the Magellan 800, I think has been just a phenomenal feat for all solid state. And it's been very well received. It's, it's not going anywhere. The Magellan 800 is its own animal and it's, it's all analog, all solid state. But yet we've had so many people just and players comment about how great it feels, the warmth it has, the character and all that that is. But yet we knew that from our heritage and, and what we've designed in the past that tubes are their own thing. And even in you know today's world with uh, you know digital and uh, and uh, you know class D and and all the software driven platforms, there's still something about the feel of tubes done correctly, and uh, and that's that's what we wanted to pursue. And you know there's a lot of great software stuff out there and a lot of great uh, you know digital uh, signal paths and such, but that's just not Gensler's brand. So, so it's not who we are. And we just live in the analog world. And, and you know, <laughs> sometimes I, I really appreciate that. But uh, it uh, it really was something we wanted to to come back to and bring out a very unique platform. Uh, you know, yes, the Streamliner 600 and 900 were something we designed and they are still you know, hard to find uh, on the on the uh, used market. You know, they still get a, a high dollar for them. But this is taken from what we did and who we were and what that was. And this is really way beyond. And the next level doesn't really share anything in that regard. And uh, we're, like I said, very very excited about what it came to be. So. Yeah, the when we first started talking about this, you know, and then of course when I very first kind of unboxed it, 
the the streamliners absolutely kind of come to mind you know um I think those. Did they also use? Was it two or three preamp tubes? In, yeah, that in was the streamliners. Uh, yeah, three three preamp tubes. So you know, you you think to yourself, okay, you know, this is just going to be a slightly updated, uh, you know, a very reminiscent. Is I, I'm not saying I was expecting that, but I thought that was a decent chance that it could be something very similar to the to the streamliner, which again, yeah, gray head in its own right. But um, this kinetics absolutely is its own thing. It definitely has its own voice and its own sound, and and to your there are comments about the Magellan too. The Magellan is a solid state head that has some of the characteristics I've always associated with good tube gear too. You know, it's, it's a decidedly non-sterile, you know, it's yeah. more organic than a lot of things. So I was also kind of thinking how much more can you really change or improve upon the Magellan? But it's, it is amazing how different the two of them sound next to each other, but after I spent even more time with them, I realized they have some inherent, you know, similarities that are kind of like um, almost like a functional starting point that they each let you go in certain directions predict predictably. But they, uh, I, yeah, they I do think it they're in a family. Way. You know, they're they're part of a family, yeah. and yeah. but they are dramatically different. They can be dramatically different. You know, when I just set everything at twelve o'clock and go from one to the other, and even throw in the streamliner in that, they're completely different voices yep. and this uh, kinetics is a completely different voice uh, from the streamliner was there anything um either trying to go for the voicing you were after now or maybe some parts availability have changed ch changed over the years were there any like unique challenges with getting the kinetics to its final Final oh yeah, point. yeah. Uh, like I said, we started. You know, the the platform, the concept. You know, first very rough prototypes were. You know, before uh, before COVID, and COVID hit, and it created all sorts of issues just for manufacturing what you already had, and trying to develop something new. We had several issues. Number one, the you know, along with that period was the you know, Ukrainian war and the, the issue with tubes and what components in tubes actually come from Russia, even though they may be built somewhere else. And, you know, the availability of tubes, price of tubes was very erratic. And we thought, oh, my gosh, you know, <laughs> yes, we had a supply of tubes already, but we thought, what's what's going on here with uh, what this is going to be uh, with trying to build a tube amp in, in that world? This is probably 2020, 2021 time frame. And in the kinetics, obviously, the, the beauty of this amp is the, uh, the power supply for the tubes is running at 300 volts. And in the uh, streamliner, we did that with its own unique uh, you know, power supply, which had a transformer and, and, and filter caps and all that. And with this initial designs within the, the kinetics, we were going to try something with the switch mode power supply and to run, uh, you know, just part of the like the I think it was the uh, the heaters in the uh, in the tubes. But um, going down that road for a while, we realized, oh my gosh, this seems a, a specific chipset that we're sole source. And, and in the you know electronic world, all the upheaval that was going on, we didn't want to get into anything that would develop in using parts that we really didn't have a good control over. So and and getting into that type of a power supply, initially we saw some advantages, but we saw the disadvantages, which was the the susceptibility to noise, both on the waveform. And even in the EMC, you know, uh, testing platform and all that, and because it's a high impedance uh, tube design, that didn't go well with the, uh, the switch mode power supply type of uh, design in a compact package. So we came back to redesigning a power supply that was more traditional with the uh, transformer and filter caps and again completely different than what we did with the streamliner but that was something that our vendor you know easily able to source and manufacture the transformer we could have the transformer made exactly the way we wanted it and uh, for safety reasons and for the stability of, of the power supply under you know various voltages and and different high line low line conditions so uh, 
that's where we came from. But the power supply in the tubes took took a very long time to uh, to move through, and, and some of the upheaval with with the world and electronics world in the 2021, 2022 was, you know, was part of that. So. Right. So you're running three 12 AX sevens, I believe. Yes. So high grade, and uh, 12 AX seven tubes. Fantastic. Um, it really sounds great. Uh, I'll go about it more when I have my hands on review, but one of the things I really like about it is it, it has some, some bounce to it and there's a lot of harmonic content and excitement going on. So, you know, well, a lot of people have different versions of what tube sounds like, but to me, like those two things, like the bounce and the harmonic excitement are what I think in my mind, really good tube gear brings to the table. Well, that's, I mean, yes, I, I totally agree. And, and we feel that running the, the preamp tubes at the full 300 volts is what gives you that excitement and, and, and that kinetic back and forth with, you know, what you dig in and put into the, the preamp is what you'd get back. And this goes to a story from Bobby Vega that he shared with us years ago, back in the Gensbins days, that uh, he was at our shop and uh, we were going through a bunch of amps at the time. And he just, you know, Bobby Vega, he is his own person. He's phenomenal. He's a, a great character as long as a phenomenal yes. bass player. And he was just saying, you know, a, a great tube amp to me is like, you know, a basketball. It's like dribbling a basketball, you know, it's just, it's how you release it and how you can anticipate how it comes back to you off the floor. And I kept, oh, I got that visual in my mind. I see that. I can feel it, you know, like that rolls off your tips, the fit your fingertips and comes back and says, yeah, that, that's just, that's what I get out of a great, you know, tube head. It's just, you know, that's what I live for. And, and I never forgot that, you know, and at the time, you know, that, you just kind of file those things away. But when the kinetic starts coming around, said, yeah, that's what this is. This is, you know, what you put in, what you hit the floor with, it, it comes back at you. And we didn't have a name or anything at the time. But I said, yeah, this is an interaction. It's, this is, yeah. you know, uh, this is what we're doing. And eventually, you know, the kinetic, you know, uh, interaction came to be. And the Kinetics 800, uh, you know, became the brand name for it. So great name, by the way. That's a Ex excellent name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, definitely been uh, phenomenal, and uh, you know we've had a lot of a lot of people uh, give us feedback on you know what we're doing, what it should be, and and uh, yeah, we're we're really happy in all regards. So, did you have any um, significant input from any of your endorsed players that led to any design changes on the kinetics? Uh, initially, no. I mean, we uh, you know. In, in our rep, in Scott's repertoire of designing things, and this even goes back to the Magellan 800 in our work on the contour circuits. You know, Scott has a you know a library of response curves uh, on various amplifiers. Yeah, you know, the SVT was one that we kind of looked at when we were doing the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, B contour for the yep. for what the uh, what Magellan offers in that. Uh, that shape and uh, where it tapers the lows tapers the top and there's like this 80 100 hertz push in it and uh, we looked at a variety of things and frankly you know we listened out there in the world and what people loved in tube amps and you know there's a few around i know you have one the sa 200 was one we you know kind of looked at what that was like what is that that you know it's like this holy grail this uh you know, unicorn type of thing almost. And, uh, but it's a great tube amp and there's a variety of things. Now we're looking at how they respond. We're not looking at circuits and all that kind of yeah. stuff is what is it that, that makes that what it is and how do we look at that type of a response and then bring it into the platform that we're doing, which is, you know, uh, a class D back end and, you know, a full 300 volt class A, uh, two preamp. So uh, there are a few things out there that certainly the streamliner, you know, we spent a lot of time with what the, what is the streamliner? And we, you know, obviously knew what it was. We knew some of the challenges that we had with it. And out in the world, we listened to what people, you know, a few people thought it was maybe an extra bassy at times or something in that regard. But um, we wanted the kinetics to be simple, almost an instrument, as far as what players would, how would they engage with it? But we just wanted it to be, 
you know, tactile. You know, it's just the the way you touch it. You know, have versatility and a few things that it does. It does really well. But we didn't want a ton of switches and and uh, you know various filters and things to to get in the way of just the pure tone of what it does. And early on, our first prototype that was you know pretty much a kludge together. Every we sent it to a few different players, and uh, it was very hard to get it back. <laughs> so this is this is like the Don't best, imagine. yeah, the best amp I've ever played. Mel Brown in Phoenix was one of the first players that played it. He does some of our video demos, yeah. and he said, you know, Scott and Jeff, you know, this is like the best thing I've ever played. I, I you know, I, I don't want to give it back. He said, well, that thing's pretty much glued together, so <laughs> you're not going to keep it. It's the only thing we have. But uh, we had some feedback in that regard, and, and we showed it, uh, you know, to a few people at the last 2020 NAM. Just you know, that, that was I think yeah, that's where you initially yep. you know, saw a peak of what what this may become or may be, and uh, and it uh, it took a lot of refining, you know, for sure. And you know, there were other things we had to address along these past few years, but you know. Getting to a point where we can manufacture this, going through all the uh, the tests we needed to do, safety tests as well as uh, FCC, EMC, and all that. Uh, and when you mix again high impedance in the Class D power amp section and such, it it creates its own challenges in that realm of uh, of uh, you know uh, directives and and noise beyond the scale of of the audio audio realm, you know. Well, you mentioned a lot of things there, too, that are great characteristics about the kinetics um, with the more straightforward approach, you know, five band EQ. Uh, it has the three gain stages. Um, well, it has three gain. tubes. It has, yeah, the, it has three well, tubes. I mean, it has three gain controls, I'm yes, saying, exactly. too. There's yes. six, six tube gain stages, but you have the gain volume and master. You know, that's something that, a lot of all tube heads have those type of controls and you get used to manipulating them in a certain way to get certain tones. And you can definitely do that, you know, with the uh, kinetics, which is really cool. Um, you did mention you try to avoid having a whole lot of switches, but you have one switch on here that's pretty important. I wanted to mention where you're controlling some of the high pass filtering with the, uh, the lean, the fat and the thick switches. Can you just give us a little bit of your like, I don't need to know the, the the details, but like, what were your your usability performance goals of having those switches? Well, we wanted some versatility, and going back to the streamliner, you know, we didn't have an easy way to adjust the depth of the bottom end in that amplifier, and so as we came into the kinetics, we wanted to make sure that players had the ability to control. Uh, the lower frequencies, high pass filter manipulation was one of it, but there's a lot more going on in that uh, filter circuit there. And, uh, you know, part of it is emulating, you know, not emulation, but, but taking into account what a tube amp offers in the power section. And even hearkening back to what some older classic uh, base cabinets felt like, like the lean position. You know, it's putting the word lean or thin or something on a bass amp is, you know, kind of counterintuitive. But, you know, professional pro players that are in a variety of, of atmospheres, there's many times when they're on a stage or in a room where they've got too much bottom end. Then they've got to find a way to, to lean it out. And that's exactly what this is. So starting in the lean position, yeah, that's our highest uh, high pass filter. Uh, but it's still a gentle slope, and then it starts to roll off quicker. So, and even in all three positions, there's a slight increase in the in the bass response. You know, just over a hundred. There's a little increase, and then it starts to roll gently. So, the lean position really developed. Uh, that was probably one of the last things we actually tweaked a little more when we got feedback you were mentioning artists you know nate navarro uh, gave us some great feedback mel brown gave us some great feedback and and one of my dealers greg van gelder uh, from van gelder music he's not far from me and i take this amp up several times and you know have him uh, you know play around with it and get a sense of it and the lean position really grew on all of them to where it's a really useful 
uh, position to where even flat, it sounds great, but a little bit of bass opens it up a little more to where even if that's the tone you want, you know, it's, it's there for you and it doesn't sound hollow or thin. And it kind of emulates, you know, like even the older SVTs and such or older bass cabs that were sealed and had very little lower frequency extension. And there's a lot of early bass cabs that, you know, get down to 50, 60 hertz. They really had very little uh, response down there. So the lean position kind of gives us that vibe. We switch down into the fat position, then you really feel that, you know, something has really, you know, hit me in the gut, basically. And that is, uh, again, giving a, a narrow peak in the 80 hertz range, <clears throat> which kind of emulates, uh, Scott and I have talked about this, uh, a lot of tube amps, when they, the, the, the tube section interacts with a specific type of cabinet, and you get this impedance spike that the cabinet kind of gives back to the power section of a tube amp. And that creates this big, thick feel a lot of times. Yes, the SVT had that. You know, part of its beauty was actually the impedance spike that it would create when powered by you know, a tube amp. And that's what we're bringing into the mix when it comes to the, to the fat position. About, you know, a very narrow band uh, around the 80 hertz range where it peaks and then it starts to roll off and that also shifts down that high pass filter somewhat to where it's still gradual and then it starts to Again, these are complex compound filters. It's not just an 18 dB slope. It starts and then it starts to curve down. And that's, that's the type of thing that Scott is really good at, you know, finding the usual filter that someone might use and then take it the next step to say, okay, how can this be you know, even better? And how can we have even more control over this part of what this filter is doing or the circuit's doing? And that's what a lot is happening in the, in this filter. And when you go from the, I like to call the fat position kind of the, the pant, the pant waving position because it really gets your pants waving. And then you get down to the thick position that that really shifts everything that much further down. And now you've got a slope that slopes up from maybe the 60, 60 hertz uh, to 40 hertz. You've got a bit of an increase, and then it starts to gradually roll and then steepens as you get uh, further past the, the knee of the high-pass filter. And that's rolling down, you know, really, you know, un right under 30 hertz. And there's some other sub-filtering down there, so you don't get this rumbly kind of uncontrollable bottom end out of this thing. You know, it's very controlled, very musical. We've had, you know, several players just comment about how tight it feels. Even a, and part of it is, is a really loud volumes. You know, how does this amp blossom when you get it up, uh, you know, to real cruising uh, speed and you're really driving it on a big stage and in a big room? And a lot of those things just get a little more enhanced, you know, when you do that. You know, it's one thing to hear these things in a small cabinet in a room, you know, they might be a little more subtle. But when you open up that amp, drive it into a bigger cabinet, maybe, you know, a 15, a 15 210, a 410, then this thing starts to really come alive. And time after time, players have told us that this is one big sounding amplifier. It is. Um, it definitely has a big sound to it. And obviously that output section is, is, is a proven, yeah, proven star as well. Rock solid, yeah. But one of the things I really like though is with those with the the lean fat thick switch and then having the bass and the low mids as well, uh, you do have a lot of control over the low end. And I found I really appreciate the controls that it offers because it let me really dial in a full sound that wasn't uh, overly bloomy or whatnot. You know, you still had all the control, but still fullness and and punch. So um, I'm a fan of those controls for sure. Yeah, and we kind of went through it quickly, but even in the in the first gain stage where we have, you know, the on position and then the extra gain, that's increasing, yep. you know, the gain you know, in that whole input input buffer and all of that by eight dB, but yet with the gain and volume controls, that doesn't have to be overdrive. That can be very clean, and and I've already talked to several players that have tried that out running the you know in the boost position. Yeah, but yet running it cleanly, it just opens up that part of the uh, 
of the network that much more and just adds a little more depth and dynamic to what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's just another option, right? Yeah, and yeah. also one that you might vary depending upon which instrument you're, you're using. Oh, yeah. But um, yeah, I was playing with that the very first night that I unboxed it. And, and as you point out, even without having a, an overdriven tone, it still gave me some more usable options that, that I really like. Super cool. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, now, you've been working on this since before the pandemic, but it feels like by and large, you've done a pretty good job of keeping this under wraps. How'd you manage to keep you know, keep this kind of quiet as long as you did. Threats, right? lots of threats. No, <laughs> no, no. no. Uh, I don't know. I, I think everybody we've talked with, and you know, we talked with you a long, long time ago. Everybody knew that you know, this was something. You know, it was going to take a while, and we just, you know, wanted to have conversations with people that knew about it, and just say, you know, let's let's keep it quiet, and uh, you know, help us out because it, it it won't be tomorrow, but. We think it'll be something very special when it does come out. And uh, yes, uh, overall, I think it's been a very well kept secret for as long as we've been working on it. And uh, and I'm um, very uh, pleased with those uh, respectful relationships we've had, <laughs> right. you included. Yeah, we have. Uh, well, we have uh, you know some here now. So dealers, uh, you know, that got on early uh, have uh, some in stock and uh, dealers uh, in Europe and UK have them, Australia, you know, so uh, uh, around there. But, you know, it's it's a new amp. It's a, it's not an inexpensive amp, but uh, we think it's different and uh, we think it's exciting for what it is. And and we especially think it's exciting for how different it is from the uh, Magellan 800. Well, you know, in all honesty, we live in a very good time to be a bass player. There is some fantastic gear available out there. And the uh, the number of bass products, uh, amplification products that you might buy that just uh, fail to meet the grade is is almost non-existent. Almost everybody can put out something that's, that's a good functional bass amp. Yeah, and so right. I can see where it'd be a challenge to kind of separate yourself from this. And trust me, I've been able to play so many things and you, many you which, have, as I said, yes. are, are very wonderful. Yeah. But believe me, folks, when I tell you that there is something special about this kinetics, you really want to check it out. It, that bounce, that feedback, um, and, and just all in, in a, as you said, the family kind of tone for, you know, against their products of, of kind of being full range, um, but not exceptionally voiced, but still bringing some you know, excitement to it. Uh, I'm, I'm really in love with this amp. I'm so glad I got a chance to check it out. Thank you for talking with us about this. And well, uh, I think I... folks are going to be pretty pleased when they get their ears around one of these things. And I'm going to be working on a, at least a short first look review to give you a sneak peek of what it sounds like. Well, great. Well, thank you, Tom, for this opportunity. Yep. All right, folks, uh, check out more at BassGearMag.com and find your nearest Gensler dealer and tell them that you want to pick up a Kinetics 800. This thing is fantastic. And uh, thanks, Jeff. Thank you.